Hello, BookTube. We're back with the Bankrupt Bookseller and a section called Books About Food and Drink. There is nothing that I know of in literature that deals with headaches. Burns I know with his address to toothache, though hello di uh, diseases, I think he writes, but no one else has impressed my memory with their words on pain. There's a book which I remember Conan Doyle makes Dr. Watson refer to in Sherlock in the Sherlock Holmes series, The Mystery of Pain, by James Hinton, but I have never handled it. My headaches are the consequence of ill dieting. I sometimes think, and yet, I have never been able to find the road to right diet. The doctor I go to see is an excellent fellow, but cannot cure anything. He almost admits it. Dr. Diet, Dr. Quiet, and Dr. Merriman, in his opinion, are too big a con uh, consultant party. He thinks little of Dr. Diet, a good varied dietary, something for everyone. He knows nothing of Dr. Quiet, and as for Dr. Merriman, one man's jokes are another man's despair. After a day of headaches, I took to looking through my books for a remedy. My, f my first, not an acrostic, is Diet for Men written by a doctor whose description of himself somehow amused me. My head, perhaps, is weak still from the headaches. Here it is. Diet for Men by Cecil Webb Johnson, MB, CHB, Major, RAMC, bracket, TF, close bracket, late civil surgeon and officer commanding station hospital, dum-dum, surgeon in charge of native uh, contonement and fellows, Followers Hospital, Dum Dum, Specialist in Midwifery, Diseases of Women and Children, 8th Lucknow Division, with an illustration. This writer has also written Diet for Women with two illustrations and How Not to Be Fat, apparently very mercifully with no illustrations. According to the publisher's announcement uh, facing the page, the first of these books rung from the Daily Chronicle the following econom. Useful and entertaining, he has done brave service to our sex. While the daily graphic is allowed only one word, an ecstatic one, in its description of the work, the one word, splendid. I haven't diet for women in my stock, nor yet have I how not to be fat, but I will procure both from Simpkins with alacrity if anyone desires them. I return to my diet for men, lest before the afternoon is out, I sell it to a dyspeptic, dyspeptic. It is readable enough, and what more do booksellers expect from their books? It isn't a fattest book, the doctor declaiming that, disclaiming that on the first page. But there is not much in it for a man who is laid out and laid low by headaches once or twice a week. That bang on the head I had in the war must have de deranged or disordered. Would that be a better word? The cortex? It was a funny sensation. I never heard the shell coming. I was blown up in the air and fell. It f I felt on the pavé. My own impression was that I was bumped on the back of the head, but the mark uh, was on my right forehead. Dr. Webb Johnston doesn't help much uh, with such a headache any more than his colleagues did at the RAMC at that time. In fact, they never admitted that the headaches were due to external action. They blamed my liver, and perhaps they were right, for the guess of a doctor may be as near the truth as that of any other man. I am prone to liver disorders, I fancy, for I am fond of food. I am a gorger, at times a glutton, and yet it is uh, a bookman's fault. Here Macaulay on Dr. Samuel Johnson, a bookman and the son of a bookseller like myself, I quote from the essay in Encyclopedia Britannica 1881 edition, a set of which I will sell bound half-calf, slightly rubbed for three guineas, I feel, and for Johnson as I write it a quotation of a paragraph. Being after 
Well, being often very hungry when he sat down to his meals, he contracted the habit of eating with ravenous greediness, even to the end of his life and even at the tables of the great. Uh, the sight of food affected him as it affects wild beasts and, prey, and birds of prey. His tastes in cookery formed in subterranean ordinaries and alamodes beef shops was far from delicate. Whenever he was so fortunate uh, as to have near him a hare and had been kept too long or a meat pie made with rancid butter, he gorged himself with such violence that uh, his being swelled and the moisture broke out on his forehead. My dear delicate Thomas Bobbington Macaulay, how disgusted you were. I can feel it, and yet I forgive you, for you never knew what it was to contract a habit. A habit, mark you, of eating with ravenous greediness. I am afraid there were other reasons for Macaulay's dislike, though his essay on Johnson is the best thing he wrote in my mind. He disliked Tories as much as Johnson disliked Whigs. The first Whig was the devil, declares Johnson. Macaulay's uh, counter is a glancing blow, but it seems the temper of the mind behind. Quote, he, Johnson, was himself a Tory, not from rational conviction, but from mere uh, passion. I hope these twain uh, have made it up in the Elysian fields where hack writers uh, hunger and thirst no more and finicking essays are at rest. Food eaten ravenously or delicately is a great topic nonetheless. It is the only pleasure that reoccurs three times a day and it is only equal in sleep which comes to with uh, such a satisfying regularity. My old lot of books on food is good, mostly second-hand, but all worthwhile. I prefer to sell a cookery book to a novel. I rate my art high. Here are some of the selection of books on food and drink. Book of the Table, published by Ketterners. The Restaurant People with a Deduction to George Augustus Sala, Why Not Grow Young by Robert Service, a book on diet and health, Marcel Boulstein's Simple French Cooking for English Homes, Eating Without Fears by George F. Scottson Clark, a very jolly book uh, by a bon viveur, and a manual of modern cook cookery, a good practical book published by no less the University of London Press. The Gentle Art of Cookery and Lady Jekyll's uh, Kitchen Essays I also have. They are good works, and probably these two books have done as much for the post-war homes of England, how beautiful they stand, as the Tories of Versailles. Joseph Conrad's wife, too, has a good book in my collection, the introduction to which was written by her husband. The opening paragraph in my present phase of industry I will transcribe for who knows, I may uh, sell it on the morrow uh, to one who would win her husband's love for a mess of pottage. Potage, I guess. Um, quote, of all the books produced, writes the author of The Arrow of Gold, since the most remote ages by human talents and industry, those only that treat of cooking are, from a moral point of view, above suspicion. The intention of every other piece of prose may be discussed with even uh, or and even mistrusted, but the purpose of the cookie, cookery book is one and unmistakable. Its object can conceivably be no other than to increase the happiness of mankind. End quote. Conrad admits that he had found it impossible to read through a cookery book, even his wife's, but comes forward modestly and gratefully as a living example of her practice. Note the capitals. I think this section is the only one where Conrad uses them and he is noted, uh, he, and be it noted that he used them to apostrophize himself. 
I have a great old edition on my in my stock, the title page of which I will also transcribe. The Art of Cookery, made plain and easy, to which are added 150 new recipes, a copious index, and a modern bill of fare for each month in the manner the dishes are placed upon the table by H. Glass, Edinburgh, printed for Alexander Donaldson, sold at his shops, number 48, in the St. Paul's Churchyard, London and Edinburgh, 18... Um, Eighteen seventy um four. Eighteen seventy four. Eighteen seventy four? Is that right? There's a C missing. M D C C is supposed to be seventeen. Seventy eight seventeen seventy four, yeah. Uh here is a well told tale heading and all from page two thirty. To make an egg as big as twenty. And he quotes again in a paragraph. Part the yolks from the whites, strain them both separate through a sieve, tie the yolks up in a bladder to form a, a ball, boil them hard, then put this ball into another bladder and the whites around it, tie it up oval fashion and boil it. These are used for grand salads. This is a very pretty this is very pretty for a ragu. Boil five or six yolks together and lay in the middle of the ragu of eggs and so you may make them of any size you please isn't that fine the price of the book is five shillings and cheap old cookery books and ancient cuisine is an oddity and i am afraid um bad stock i know all of a school teacher made me get it for him as he thought it was by william hazlitt it was by w carew has it hazlitt <coughs> <laughs> and is in the Book Lovers Library, published in 1902. I would sell it willingly. My customer wouldn't take it, and perhaps, unfairly, I haven't taken to it e either. The best book I have of this eating and drinking sort is George Saintsbury's, Saintsbury's Notes on a uh, Cellar Book. It is a third edition, but signed by the professor himself. It is all too good that I fear that the day it may be bought. In fact, I doubt if I would part with it. Hear the bold, full-blooded, honest man. And another large quotation. Uh, there is no money among that which I have spent uh, since I began to earn my living, of the expenditure of which I am less ashamed, or which ha gave me better value in return than the price of the liquids uh, chronicled in this booklet. When they are good, they pleased my senses, cheered my spirits, improved my moral and intellectual powers, besides enabling me to confer the same benefits on either people, and whether they were bad or good, uh, the grapes that had yielded them were fruits of that uh, tree of knowledge, which, as theologians too commonly forget to expound it, it became not merely lawful, but incumbent on us to use with discernment when our first mother had paid the price for it and handed it on to us to pay for likewise. My headache is gone. I have taken my cachet and drank a cup of tea. I will go out. I feel righteous. I feel good. I will test the prophecy, for he hath filled the hunger, hungry with such things, such start that again for he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away i have faith i will be filled with good things and will praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men we'll end it there and we'll be back next time